Now, can we extend these concepts to equations which involve higher order derivatives? Let us, let us take an example. Let us say we have this differential equation. This is a fourth order differential equation that we can see and uh, this is many times a prototype of a very important problem in structural mechanics that is deflection of beams. So, if you want to find out the displacement, you can get similar prototype differential equations. Our objective is not to go into such a physical problem, but see that how we can cast this equation in a similar formulation. So, what we are going to do here? We will see that how we can get a variational formulation out of it. What could be the types of boundary conditions? Let us be open and see that what could be the possible boundary conditions. So, what is the first step to get the V form from the D form? We have to multiply the equation with V and integrate over the domain. So, this is the key step to get the V form. So, we will integrate it by multiplying with V over the domain. Next, what we will do? We will integrate it by parts. So, let us just do it quickly because we know that how, how this needs to be done. So, V is the first function and the function appearing here is the second function. So, first function into integral of the second. Let us say that x equal to 0 and x equal to L are the bounds of x minus integral of derivative of first into integral of the second. What, with the, what is the next step? See, we will stop to the limit where we will see that the orders of the derivatives in the variational term and the original term are the same. Then it will automatically become a symmetric term. The operator will be become a symmetric operator. So, we will integrate it once more by parts with dv dx as the first function and the remaining as the second function. So, let us do that. Now, let us try to examine the boundary conditions and the nature of these operators. So, let us try to examine
this will be positive right. Now let us examine the boundary terms. In this boundary term, referring to this boundary term, you tell me what is the primary variable, what is the secondary variable, primary variable. Primary variable is the variable on which the variation is taken in the boundary term y because v is variation in y. What is the secondary variable? The coefficient of the variation term. So, whatever else remains other than v. So, d d x of this one. There is also another boundary term, this one. So, here what is the primary variable? dy dx because the variation is taken v is what delta y. So, it is delta of dy dx okay? because v is delta y and d and delta are exchangeable. So, it is delta of dy dx. So, primary variable is dy dx. So, it is delta of what that what is the primary variable. Secondary variable a d 2 y d x 2. So, what are could be the possible boundary conditions that you could specify? What could be your possible essential boundary conditions. So, either y specified or dy dx specified. So, this could be essential boundary condition, this could be essential boundary condition. So, you can get one important understanding that specifying the derivative is not necessarily natural boundary condition. That was a second order derivative problem, this is a fourth order differential equation problem. And specifying this is a natural boundary condition. So, these are specifications of these are natural boundary conditions. So, in the boundary, either you have to specify the essential boundary condition or you have to specify the natural boundary condition. Now, once these are specified, <coughs> the remaining terms you have a y comma v as this one. and L of V as this term. Obviously, when you substitute the boundary conditions here, the boundary conditions are not such that they are always 0. So, there will be term, some term that will remain after substituting the boundary condition. For example, let us say that at x equal to L, you have d d x of A d 2 y d x 2 is equal to some value 1 in some units. So, it will become v at x equal to l. So, that is not 0 because you cannot simultaneous, simultaneously specify v and this one. So, v in the boundary will remain. So, where will that go? That you can club up with this l term. So, the l term may contain this plus some boundary terms depending on what, what are the non-zero terms in the boundary. Okay, so, that, that should be clear. So, it is not that these terms are together giving rise to 0. Some non-zero terms may there depending on what are the boundary conditions specified. And those specified values of the boundary conditions, now let us, let us, let us take an example. Let us say that let <coughs> y is equal to 0 at x equal to 0, d d x of a d 2 y d x 2 is equal to c at x equal to l, d y d x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 and a 
d two y d x two. Let us call it c one and let us call it c two at x equal to l. Then let us write. the corresponding terms so in the boundary term you have at x equal to 0 this term will be 0 even if y was non zero but some specified that means v is 0 okay so here it will be minus uh, sorry this is equal to v at l into c1 this minus 0 so that is the boundary term that we get from here then minus at x equal to l it is c2 so c2 into dv dx at l then the remaining term will be 0 because dy dx is specified so dv dx is 0 plus a d 2 y d x 2 d 2 v d x 2 d x So, this you can write in the form a y v equal to l v. Where a y v maybe let us use a different symbol say capital A because we have already used one small a in the problem. where what is capital A y v? It is <coughs> integral of A d 2 y d x 2 d 2 v d x 2 d x x equal to 0 x equal to L. What is L v? Whatever you take it on the other side. So, minus integral of b v d x minus v l c 1 plus d v d x l c 2. So, this is a linear operator on v. So, the objective of going through this example was to illustrate that even some terms from the boundary they do remain, they also can be clubbed and put in this general form. So, here also you can see that capital A is symmetric and it is positive definite. Capital A is a bilinear operator and L is a linear operator. So, with these considerations you can also convert this problem into a corresponding M form and that I leave on you as an exercise, it is very simple, one more step can lead it to M form. Now, we have seen that how to make a variational formulation of a differential problem, differential equation problem and not only that, how, how can that problem may be converted into an equivalent minimization problem. The question is that once we have formulated these types of problems, we were intending for some solution, but never we hinted that how should we get the solution. We, we were abstracting ourselves from the solution, we were not putting so much of attention on how to get the approximate solution, but the formulations which can perhaps lead us to the approximate solution. Now, if these formulations or the concepts of these formulations are to be implemented in practice, then there are certain mechanisms by which we can do it. So, those mechanisms we learn one by one 
So, the objective of the next part of our study will be to learn the art of approximate solution of differential equations through the principles that we have just learned. So, when we say approximate solutions of differential equations, the situation is that we can have various techniques, really a lots and lots of techniques for using which we can get approximate solution. We will try to cover as many techniques pertinent to CFD as possible in this particular course, but we will start with those techniques which directly follow from our previous discussion, because that gives us a general uh, collection of methods, so to say, with a name weighted residual approach. This approach gets a clue from the variational formulation. What is the clue? In the variational formulation, we are multiplying the differential equation with a weighting parameter which is nothing but the variation in the in the variable itself. So, v we are multiplying the differential equation with v and integrating over the domain and setting it to 0. Only thing is that this v is an arbitrarily small variation. Taking clue from that the weighted residual approach it was defined or it was introduced in this way. So, here in the differential equation form you have an operator which is maybe a first order derivative operator, second order derivative operator whatever a differential operator. Now, the differential operator contains a dependent variable like say y which you want to solve as a function of x. So, let us take an example, let us say that you want to solve d 2 y d x 2 equal to 0, one of the simplest possible equations. So, we call it a different linear differential equation where l y equal to 0, where l is the linear operator d 2 d x 2, just a notation. Now, we could get a variational formulation of this one very easily by multiplying this with v and integrating it over the domain that is very simple. Question will remain that what is that v in a non abstract sense, in an abstract sense of course, we know that it is the variation in y true, but if you want to implement it in practice, if you want to use a function in place, in place of this after all in the function space it is a function, if you want to implement a function in, in place of this one, what could you do? So, the relaxation to the abstract understanding is that what we could do perhaps is to use some special function in place of this v, which could achieve the same purpose as that of this original introduction, original meaning of v in the introduction. Then the question remains that what will be this y? You want to solve for this y, this y you do not know. So, you need some approximation to this y which you want to substitute in this integral, otherwise this will remain a differential equation. We want to convert it into some non-differential form, maybe an algebraic form. So, if you want to convert it to an algebraic form and why do we want to convert it to an algebraic form? Because we know that how to easily solve algebraic equations. And in fact, one can use numerical tools for solving algebraic equations. So, to get an algebraic form, what we will do is we can substitute y as an approximate polynomial. So, if you substitute y as an approximate polynomial, then d 2 y d x 2 will be and will be another polynomial, which is the approximate polynomial differentiated twice with respect to x. 
So, that approximate polynomial will be approximate and because it is approximate d 2 y approximate d y 2 or l y approximate will not be equal to 0, right. Because the exact function if it was there, now if you are very lucky or if you have such a great insight that you know what is the final solution and you substitute that as an approximate solution, it will be 0 directly. So, that can be valid for only simple cases, but not in complex cases, which you really want to solve numerically. So, in general, if you substitute y approximate in the differential equation, it will not be 0. So, when it will not be 0, your l y minus l y approximate that is a residual r, which is non 0. So, this residual is your error. L y and L y approximate if these two were both equal to 0, then the residual would have been 0. Because L y itself is 0, your L y approximate is the residual. Your objective is <coughs> to minimize the residual in an integral sense over the domain. So, for that what you do is you multiply it with a weight function and make the weight function in such a way that in an integral sense over the entire domain, the error incurred because of substitution of an approximate y in place of the actual y is minimized. So, that approach in a mathematical formalism is called as weighted residual approach. So, what it is basically trying to do? You are writing the residual, you are multiplying the residual with a weighting function w which is a non abstract function which is not like the variation in y, but it is some function we will later on see in the next class that how to choose these functions and integrate it over the domain. So, let us call it d omega where d omega is an elemental part of the domain and set it to 0. So, by this what we try to do? Try to minimize the error or the residual in an weighted integral sense. So, what you are basically doing? You are multiplying it with a weighting function. So, you have got now two types of functions. One is the y star or y approximate. This we call as trial function. Why it is a trial function? Because you do not know what is y. This is just as a trial you have substituted. And this trial function may have unknown coefficients which you want to evaluate by imposing this constraint. So, you have another function w which is you call as weight function or weighting function. So, you choose some trial function, you choose some weighting function with an effort that your total error in an integral sense over the entire domain is 0. So, this is the physical meaning of this mathematical equation that you try to you make an attempt to minimize the total error incurred over the entire domain because of substitution of an approximate function instead of the actual function you have incurred an error and you are attempting to minimize the total error in an integral sense over the domain and that you do by setting this integral equal to 0. So, that is as if your effort is to make a 0 error in an integral sense and for that you require these two functions one is the trial function and the another is the weighting function and this concept of this entire formulation is borrowed from the previous variational formulation because it is as good as writing the original differential equation with just approximate function substituted in place of the actual function that is one approximation and the weighting function not the variation, but some arbitrary weighting function. So, these are the two relaxations that we have made. We have not substituted the actual function, we have substituted the approximate function instead and we have not substituted variation in the variable, 
but we have substituted an arbitrary weighting function instead. But otherwise, this formulation has a great similarity with the variational formulation. One advantage of this is that here you do not require the functions to be satisfying the special conditions like symmetric, positive definite, all those things, because we will not in general be simplifying these by using integration by parts. So, these functions will require some other special requirements that we will see in the next class, but we can see that these functions are not as rigorous as that of the original functions, original solutions and the variation and therefore, it will lead us to the approximate solutions of the differential equations. How it can lead us to that, that we will see in the next class. Thank you.